You're listening to The Luxury Item, the podcast on the business of luxury and the people and companies that are shaping the future of the luxury industry. Here's your host, Scott Kerr. American consumers, if not global consumers, have become subscription nation. Sure, there are staples like Netflix and Spotify and cell phone plans, but we've only recently been on the subscription box kick, and its impact has been shaking up e-commerce. According to McKinsey, the subscription e-commerce market is worth about 12 to $15 billion. For an industry that's been around for about a decade or so, and most of the players much less, that's impressive growth. According to Fast Company article, there were 3,500 subscription box services as of late 2018, an increase of 40% from the year before. Why have consumers become addicted to subscription services? Studies have shown us that receiving a package, even when it's a consumer ordering it for themselves, is seen from the brain's reward center like receiving a gift. On top of that, consumers are drawn to subscriptions and deliveries because everyone likes tasks to be automated. There are boxes for beauty, like Birch Box, boxes for clothing, for Stitch Fix, fragrances from Scentbird, meal kits from HelloFresh, dog stuff for BarkBox, craft beers selected by experts are on tap for monthly payment, and a Peloton subscription to burn off all those calories. But what about luxury subscription boxes? After all, affluent consumers deserve the same convenience and joy of receiving monthly packages like everyone else. My very special guest today on The Luxury Item is Daniel Curtis, the founder and CEO of Rob Vices. Daniel launched Rob Vices Luxury Subscription Box in 2018 with the idea of bringing the content from the legendary Rob Report to life. If you're not familiar with Rob Report, it's a luxury lifestyle magazine that's been around for about 40 years and targets ultra-affluent consumers, sometimes called the Bible of Luxury. Rob Devices delivers a full box of curated high-end products, generally with a theme or story tying the products together in the box. Boxes include things like cigars, gemstone cheese plate, premium chocolates, cashmere gloves, truffle mustard, a bottle of wine. I can go on and on. If any of the male characters uh, in the Roy clan from the uh, TV show Succession had a subscription box membership, it would probably be through Rob Vice's. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you for having me, Scott. <laughs> I'm thrilled to have <laughs> I appreciate you. Appreciate the introduction. Um, so, you know, before we jump in, I noticed something really stuck out at me. I, I, um, I think it was one of the boxes I was looking at from might have been September, where you had a famous quote or lyrics. I see sometimes you put on the inside lid of the box, and the one that I saw, I think, it was in September. You had a quote from Abraham Lincoln. He said, "It has been my experience that folks who have no vices have very few virtues." So does that pretty much sum up what Rob Vice is about? 100%. Uh, our, our core product is called Rob Vices, uh, but what we're actually about is virtues. The things that we celebrate, uh, you know, in our experience, uh, it typically is it's wine, food, uh, toys and tools and things that we would normally uh, have a chance to uh, discover when we're traveling, when we're, we're indulging ourselves. And these are Traditionally called, you know, vices in the most uh, classic sense of the word. word. Uh, but these are the products that actually enrich our lives in the best way is when we appreciate them for uh, the virtues that they actually bring to our lives. So our company is actually called Virtuous Vices. Virtuous Vices. And uh, that's really our core philosophy. Yeah, so Abraham Lincoln's quote. Who knew that Abraham Lincoln would have a quote about vices? I had not. I thought I knew all the Abraham Lincoln He was quotes. clearly a very wise man. <laughs> so if you could tell our audience um, a little about from the beginning, um, you know, how – what was the idea behind Rob Vices and how it spun off when you saw the idea spinning off from uh, from Rob Report? Yeah, so my, my background, I grew up – I had the, the happy privilege of growing up within Rob Report magazine. Uh, my my family business was a publishing business focusing on niche media uh, in in luxury categories ranging from you know entertainment uh, to yachting and to of course as you you kindly uh, referred to Robert as the Bible of luxury and of course I loved this brand um, and uh, decided to join the family business and what I always focused on in my about ten years officially with the company was how. How are we going to, you know, continue to tell our stories, communicate what authentic luxury is in a rapidly changing media landscape? Uh, I worked on 
uh, creating more uh, event strategies for welcoming in a younger uh, side of our audience. We launched iPad applications and iPhone applications, uh, ran around the world launching uh, Rob Report magazine in countries all around the wor world to make it a truly global brand, and wanted to make sure that we, we found a way to you know bridge that gap, because everybody knows that you know magazines are, are not a, a growing business. Uh, people still love print media. People still value magazines, but you know you rarely see a newsstand anymore. And you go to the airport, and the the granola bar section is four times the size <laughs> of you know the the newsstand. Um, so this idea of a luxury subscription box uh, came out of an effort to evolve the way that we share editorial content. I had an epiphany moment uh, after a meeting with one of our top clients, uh, Diageo, Johnny Walker Blue. Uh, we had a great partnership with Johnny Walker Blue for many years, and uh, for them, rather than asking for the normal things that you know advertisers were pushing for, you know the positioning in the magazine, you know the the digital uh, added value, it was all about how many events can you throw where you're going to get our liquid into your readers' mouths. We want your editorial. We want your you know to be recognized that that we have your endorsement, of course, uh, which is not something that you can buy. Um, but they, they need someone to walk in and say, this is something that we, we believe in. And we want people to actually have that discovery experience. And so I left there thinking, and, and we finalized a, you know, a massive advertising deal. I agreed to do way too many events. I spent you know, 18 months of my life running around the country pouring Johnny Walker Blue, which was actually a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, what's the downside? Um, but what I was thinking is, like, we need to find a way to scale this discovery experience. So thought, well, let's actually put the things that we're writing about in a package that's going to go along with our magazine. And then that idea evolved into, let's actually create an editorial magazine that comes to life in an experience that we're going to curate. So actually, in the, the end of 2015, uh, we did this as kind of a test project. Uh, we put together a, a box, and the, the first theme, the story, was a story of Brooklyn. And you know, in 2015 and continuing today, Brooklyn is a leading uh, geographical destination for where you go if you want to launch a beautiful artisanal product, whether it's, you know, artisanal pickles, cheese, popcorn, cheese, right, right. Uh, sunglasses. You know, Brooklyn is one of those places that you go to make your mark. And what a beautiful turnaround from, you know, a couple decades ago when it was one of the capitals of violent crime in America. And so we decided to have that be the theme of, you know, the future of luxury. And here we're changing our editorial experience. And we highlighted uh, about a dozen craftspeople that made absolutely beautiful things. Uh, there was a cocktail shaker, a wonderful gin, uh, the ingredients you need to make that, a cocktail with that gin. And we, we created a, a fun experience about diving into what's happening in Brooklyn. And uh, this is all different parts of Brooklyn you would cover. Yeah, it was all yeah. different types of Brooklyn, right. you know, every, absolutely everywhere. You know, every product was either physically made in Brooklyn or right. designed by someone who lives right. there. And uh, it was a little clunky. We hadn't figured out what we we're doing. It came in two boxes, uh, but it went out to 100 members who had opt opted in without really knowing what this was going to be that came from our top VIP list. And immediately the feedback was phenomenal. Um, it was, uh, we were getting phone calls saying this is the coolest thing that we've seen. And, uh, I realized that we were really onto something. Uh, I then took our second box, which had these, uh, beautiful master and dynamic headphones, an artisanal bourbon, uh, coated popcorn, a bottle of, uh, Dolce, which is, a, an American Sautern, which is phenomenal. And, uh, brought that to our big driving event in Napa Valley, where I was showing it to billionaires and people who are titans of the financial uh, sector and entertainment. And everybody signed up as soon as they saw the box. And again, the feedback we were getting was, this is wonderful. And so I realized that we had something very special and uh, decided that we were actually going to create this as a, a new way of storytelling. I actually spun this out as a separate company in partnership with Rob Report. And uh, that actually happened at the, the beginning of 2016. And we uh, started to, to grow organically. And, and every month, it's, okay, let's, let's approach this like uh, the editorial calendar of a magazine. You know, what are the stories that I want to tell? What are the things that I personally love? I'm a huge wine and spirits geek. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorite things to focus on. I'm a, I'm a cigar smoker. 
I, and I, I love the things that bring people together in celebration. So we decided to start, you know, with every month, we're going to put together a collection of items that's not only going to, you know, be cool stuff that you're going to want to have, but a reason to get friends together and try something new with other people. That's a great idea. So did you, right from the beginning, because I know the boxes have a booklet in it with this pretty much it tells a story about or a theme that about um, what's in the box and the, and the story behind it, and the thinking behind it. When for your first box, did it also have a booklet and a story or like the Brooklyn one? Same, similar type of thing? It did. We've evolved that, that booklet quite a bit. Um, the, the first box actually had a, a series of cards that everything was, was on. We hadn't quite figured out the packaging and the printed materials in that, right. that first box. Uh, by about the third box, we realized, you know, we're going to create a, a nice digest of a magazine, um, creating, you know, unique editorial uh, that celebrates these brands. And we, you know, that, that is really the signature of our subscription box, um, not all subscription boxes are the same. There's a lot of replenishment boxes like Dollar Shave Club out there where you're, you're getting something where you know you're going to need. Uh, there's the sample boxes. Uh, there's a, a million of those beauty boxes out there. Um, but we really are a, you know, an evolution of an editorial platform. And telling a story, uh, whether it's about uh, the experience you would have if you traveled to a sacred uh, Japanese spa where you're going to be dipping into a, a sacred hot spring and the sake you would be drinking and uh, the minerals that would be exposed to you, your body would be exposed to in that process. Uh, we tell that story in a magazine, which is the, the signature of what we do. And, and what we find is people love tactile media. Uh, people still enjoy magazines. You're just not used to, you know, reading content that way. And it's a really engaging way to really learn something, to hold something in your hands uh, and it's more, it's much more pleasurable to read an article in print than it is uh, on your phone. Um, so that's really what we give you. It's a, it's a concise, uh, you know, nicely presented story uh, that's going to introduce you and create, a, create an emotional connection with the right. products that you've just discovered. And when, when it also does, it, you know, you, the people who are receiving the box and you, ha you have a story behind it and they've all of a sudden become experts after reading what each of the products are about that you have in there, that they're all able to tell when people come over to their place about these things. So they've become more the, sort of the orators of your brand, and they've become these mini experts all of a sudden. And I'm sure there's a lot of joy in being t for them to tell others about what's in the box. 100%. I mean, there, there is nothing more powerful than word of mouth marketing. And, you know, really understanding a, a luxury clientele and, and what's interesting to them, they're there's a lot of joy in being the host and being the generous host. And, you know, uh, everybody has that friend where you, you go out to a restaurant and you hand that friend the wine list and uh, because you know that th this guy's going to make the right, right choice. Right. Uh, or it's someone who's going to, you know, point to something at the bar when you're sitting down and being like, you should really try this stuff. That, that's, that's our customer. The person that aspires to be that person. Um, or, or the person who's always looking for new things to share. Right. Our, our customers are generous. Um, you know, we, we definitely recognize uh, the tremendous good in people and that, that people want to share things. People want to have these wonderful experiences. And we try to make every box that we have a true moment of joy right. that, that's going to brighten your life a little bit. It's fun, you know. How do you each month – so how do you come up with the idea each month of saying that – like, what is the process? And I say, well, this, this is the story we want to tell next month. How do you do that? Is it something that you look out into, um, you know, the culture, pop culture, what's going on there, what's going on in different parts of the world that influence it, ex different experiences that are unexpected? Um, how do you go about coming up with those ideas? Yeah, we, we really approach it similar to how a magazine is built. And we look at the, the trends that are relevant to culture today. Uh, and sometimes we will build a box on a singular product that's phenomenal. Uh, we had, uh, we discovered a, a new champagne to market last year called Mod Selection, uh, which is just tremendously world, world class. And after tasting it, we're like, we've got to change things around. This has to be in the next box. Uh, but more often than not, we're looking at what's, what people are actually doing, what they're playing with, what they're tasting. Um, Who's, you know, doing what that? It, it, Who's doing that? There's a small. That's there, a big job. It, exactly. Right. There, there's a small group of us that are really focused on this, right. and I do rely on a network of 
uh, journalists, writers that I've worked with for many, many years who are kind of my eyes and ears on the ground around the world. Like a street team. Um, but also, I've been a student of luxury my entire life. And uh, I am passionate about these things. And I, I travel. And I, everywhere I go, any restaurant I go to, I look at what they're serving, uh, what they, they give us to. I, I look at uh, the way that they're serving things. And is there a different method? Uh, when you travel somewhere, w what is something that they do when they're toasting that's different than the way that we do it here? Um, you know, for I, I, I stumbled upon the art of uh, champagne sabrage, where people uh, open up a bottle of champagne with a sword and said, that has to be in a box. <laughs> so we put a George Jensen sword in a box with a bottle of champagne with instructions on how you do this without hurting yourself. <laughs> good. <right>. good. <laughs> and that, that was that try one of our... Do not try exactly. this at home. Or try this at home. Um, so in, in his example, the uh, the box that we uh, brought today, um, it it was the, the first box of the new year, and so I wanted to look at the trend in beverage right now. Again, we we love we love drinking the good stuff, and so there is actually two bottles that we included in this box. We we're seeing a couple of trends that are very interesting. Uh, one is that brown spirits, uh, aged whiskeys, have been hot for many years. Uh, there was a huge boom in. Uh, the, the, the really bo the boom started uh, with single mal single malts when you know that came to the states and people really started collecting, um, but then there was a dramatic change that happened with bourbon, and all of a sudden bourbon's the hottest thing in the world. And I used to be able to get a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle for you know sixty bucks, and now if you're lucky you can buy one for three thousand. Um, the the what we're seeing now is there's a trend of really unique artisanal single malts coming back to the U.S. So after the uh, the trendy whiskeys went to Japan and Ireland, uh, I really believe that this is an American decade of whiskey once again. And we're seeing single malts being made in every state. And I mean, from uh, New Mexico uh, to Virginia, where your, your new bottle from Virginia uh, Distillery Co. comes from, this is a, a really unique... Uh, whiskey that starts as a sour mash from Scotland that is then aged in pork casks in Virginia, making for a really unique f uh, flavor profile either on its own or in a cocktail. And so we talk about this trend, we talk about this particular company in the whiskey and the people behind it, and want to introduce you to your own journey because now that you know this, you might look out for that, that whiskey that's being made in Northern California or in Utah or Montana. And uh, it's going to open you up to Your own you know, new horizons. Exactly. Right. So hence the Henry David Thoreau quote that you have in the booklet. It's not what you look at that matters. It's what you see. 100%. The other bottle that it, it comes in this box um, speaks to another trend that we're seeing right now where uh, there is this – rapid millennial trend of moderation which is great we we are we're very much we like to celebrate in quantity uh but everybody knows that you can't overdo it uh, you need balance in your life in all aspects and uh we, we definitely celebrate that we we in our editorial we try to remind people of course to make smart decisions and we uh found this company called seedlip uh, a couple of years ago and we didn't know if this would actually you know, have traction uh Effectively, it's booze-free booze. Wow. This is a bottle, a, a distilled spirit that is entirely non-alcoholic. And it's a bizarre concept until you experience it. When you open this and you smell it, and there's amazing botanicals uh, that really give you a unique sensory experience. And you taste this and you make a cocktail and uh, it makes a wonderful uh, Moscow mule or a, a, you know, a martini, a, a a, a gin and tonic and there's sometimes when you want the the broader experience of, of drinking or the social experience of drinking but you don't you don't need alcohol in your system at that moment uh, this is a very cool product that is new and it is going to change the way that we as a culture drink and th we celebrate the fact that cocktail culture gives us a reason to get together in person mm -hmm. um, what I love about a great drink, a great cigar, is these are the things that really get us to put down our phone and look at somebody across from us and invest time into other people, which is something that we have to do more of. Absolutely. Um, that this is, I, I always say, like, whiskey is going to save the world because... <laughs> it brings people together. Exactly. Stop yelling at each other, sit down, have a conversation. You know, we've got more in common than we don't. And there's, there's a lot to love about the world. 
how do you find customers who aren't necessarily looking for Rob Vice's or know about it? So how do you find those customers? One of the uh, huge advantages that we have is that we ourselves are a marketing platform. So the companies, like the the, the two great bottles that um, uh, you have now, um, you know, they work with us in part uh, because uh, they're looking to get exposure to a new audience. Um, our boxes themselves are a word of mouth moment. When you open this box, it's exciting. It's like Christmas comes to your your door, Christmas morning comes to your doorstep once a month, and that moment you're typically going to show other people. You're going to try something. You're going to have a friend over, and you're going to try this together. It has an amazing ripple effect, and so we have a, a built-in word of mouth marketing, uh, you know, backbone that grows our business. And and now we we've also you know seen so that we can count on uh, to a certain extent. Uh, Is there re- a refer a friend type of incentive or we're about to launch a new program? Yeah, uh, most of the ones uh, that I see out there, you know, our 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 members aren't going to care. You know, refer a friend and we'll give you fifty bucks right, or something. Not, you know, right, nominal. That's not, that, not really that interesting. Right. Um, what we're going to do is, you know, refer three friends and we're going to send you a bottle of Dom Perignon. Uh, That's a good incentive. You know, refer a dozen friends and we're going to send you a case. We're, we're going to start doing some of these things, uh, you know, that help uh, just make it fun. And, you know, we've seen that our, our members like to share. They're generous. And so stoking that is definitely right. uh, something that we're looking to do. And, and we are looking at the methods where, you know, we can have the people that communicate the experience, this unique and a little – it's a little different. You know, subscribing – uh, for a luxury product where you don't know what you're going to receive every month, um, it takes a true open mind. And the most important uh, moment in a new subscriber for a new subscriber, uh, whether we know we're going to retain that subscriber or not, is after the first box. It's you know sometimes we see that people saw that wow this guy got this this awesome whiskey from Virginia, and uh, they might have received our chocolate and cashmere box as uh, their first box. So, you know, we always have to find a way to make sure that we explain that this is about trying new things across a number of categories. Right, which is the question, pretty much my next question is how do you provide that consistent value to customers to prevent those churn rates from happening? Um, how do you surprise and delight them in a way every month so they understand that the concept is, is you know, about learning about new things and telling other people about things that they've learned trying new, new, new products. And do you find that they get that? Yeah. So I think it, the, the key is making sure that people understand the value proposition going into it. Um, as far as how do we deliver this um, collection on a monthly basis, the world is a big and wonderful place. People are – I mean, being in this job – is is inspiring because we, we see how many amazing things are being like lu- luxury products are amazing for the world um, and there's people that are creating innovative high quality uh, beautiful product that it, that is new on a daily basis and so there's no shortage of wonderful things to introduce people to uh, what what we find is you know making sure that people are open to that discovery experience is uh, you need to buy into the fact that you know there's going to be some things that are new, some things that are uncomfortable. Uh, there will be some things that are not for you. Uh, but where uh, we, we have seen you know, the majority of our members, how they respond to that is uh, it ends up being a great gift no matter what. It's always going to be products of quality. If this isn't for you, this is going to be something that there's going to be – you're not a cigar smoker, but you know somebody who, who loves a good cigar and uh, – you know, you can right. So it's not some person. right. These aren't what you have in here. Even if it doesn't appeal to your taste, it's not one of these things that you say. Well, I'll just put that in the closet with the rest of the stuff. This is something you would want to share with someone you, you know. Absolutely. And what we've actually found uh, when we first launched this, I was thinking that this was a product that was really for you know the uh, millennial male market. What we found is that the traditional Rob Report reader um, really. From age range from 27 to uh, you know 67, uh, really adopted uh, this product. So it's not just a millennial product; it's for a, a broader audience. And we also found that the most successful you know group of consumers that really stayed with us and that this made sense for were couples, people that were enjoying this together, mm-hmm. because it's an experience. When this is something that you can share with someone else, 
it becomes much more meaningful than uh, things. You're just getting things, you're getting a box of stuff. Right. Do you do anything in between the periods that they get the the, two, the boxes to keep them? You know, engaged or excited. Cool. Yeah, so we we expand uh, the editorial that we do in our magazine online. Uh, we we create video, and we have a lot of uh, you know digital forms of media that help uh, people further understand some of these cool and bizarre things that they've received. Uh, recently, uh, we launched a uh, an e-commerce boutique called VicesReserve.com, and that's a place where you can purchase more of the things that you've discovered in the box. And as we look at the future of this company, we really do see this as a uh, a marketplace where we had a lot of people that we'd have these beautiful, one example is we had beautiful crystal glasses from Turkey that had skulls etched in the, the bottom uh, that came in time for Halloween. And we had people calling us saying, these are amazing, but I only have two. I need a complete set. And so we realized we needed a channel where we could have people complete and find, you know, have uh, an easy place to discover and purchase more product. Uh, which is an important part of the development of our, of our business. Um, so we've now also created additional things where uh, limited edition boxes and cool products that we've found uh, that are available to our members on an ongoing basis. Right. So like any subscription product, it's measurable. So how? what do you look at for, for measurements each month? In, in what? In just measuring success, whether it's working or not working. We, we send out... Um, uh, periodic emails that are very specific. Uh, so we do uh, survey our members to see how is this responded. Of course, we track uh, our customer service um, you know, response. Um, and I mean, a, a big part of it is you know, the being there for the unboxing for certain people and really seeing it. Um, Any videos yet of the unboxings? Oh, yeah. Okay. We, we, and we've, you know, one of the things, when you look at the ways that you go and reach new audiences, we've tried the influencer thing, uh, which in some cases is successful, in some cases not so successful. Um, but we've kind of found this whole community of, uh, you know, subscription de- box devotees that they video and create highly produced, you know, videos with this box, uh, which are actually kind of fun to watch. Yeah. So what do you see at this point, the greatest challenge for, for growth? What's going on in the marketplace that you see is, uh, is a challenge and how do you, you know, how do you see overcoming those challenges? Well, I think as, as we look at, um, the best methods to grow, you know, for us, we have to make sure that we're growing with the right customer. Uh, and so going to the right, ch- a lot of, a lot of digital marketing channels are really designed around, uh, discount monetary value. And uh, that creates a, a customer that's not uh, meant for retention. Our, our initial customers that came from Rob Report at the beginning have almost all stayed with us uh, now for you know four years. Um, we find certain channels um, that are really made for uh, you know buying direct to consumer shoes or electronics. It, it's all about a, a quick transaction. Um, and, and that's a customer that's not likely to stay with you. So the, the real focus is on not just on how low we can get our cost per acquisition, but how specialized we can be to make sure that this is the right audience that, uh, there's a market fit for. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, I just want to switch gears to the whole subscription commerce industry. So it's really not too far fetched to say that one day, every, perhaps everything is much of our lives will be subscription based. So it seems like the main ingredient in creating these successful subscription services, is investing in compelling content, and that makes this whole unboxing experience exciting every single time. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think the important thing about the industry overall is not every subscription box uh, is the same business by, you know, by any imagination. Um, BarkBox delivers the the pure pleasure of it's fun to give your dog a new toy, and it makes it easy. It comes directly to your your door, and you know you've got something squeaky that you can you can give your dog, and you don't have to go to the the pet store. Um, so people do like the convenience of subscription boxes. Uh, people like discovery. Um, people like not having to think too hard uh, before having something wonderful happen. Um, but a lot of these different boxes are fulfilling different needs. And the fact that distribution for shipping is getting better every year means that this is only going to be something that is used in more and more categories. How do you see the whole space overall, the whole subscription box space? 
I think it's going to continue. Yeah, gonna, do you think there's some interesting and new ideas? There are definitely yeah. interesting and new ideas, um, but it's going to con- it's going to look much different than it did a couple of years ago with the big booms of Birchbox. Uh, many of these uh, these companies uh, grew too quickly. They didn't have business models that make sense, and some of these you know uh, these food delivery services where you're getting you know perishable food, uh, the sheer expense of actually getting that done logistics uh, don't work. Um, but so I think you're, we're seeing now the industry is learning, it's evolving, and it's also realizing that the subscription box is only part of the business. Just like we see, uh, that, that is one part of our business. Uh, e-commerce is another side of our business. And we stumbled upon the fact that uh, our box curation and presenting things beautifully in a unique box is actually something that other luxury brands need. So one of our big areas of development this year is creating luxury packages curated with wonderful items that will help you, whether or not <clears throat> you're a real estate developer, whether you're a private jet operator, a jeweler, uh, we'll help you communicate with your own audience and create something that's unique and engaging um, that helps you tell your story that way. All right. So think, think about some of the uh, perhaps listeners who are thinking about getting into the subscription box industry. What are some of the learnings that you can share since you launched Rob Vice's uh, first thing is make sure that you're going to be delivering something that people want. I think that's the there, there's a lot of people that have launched boxes that uh, the product itself you know doesn't really have a market fit. Um, but you know even if it's a clever idea, make sure that on an ongoing basis it makes sense. Uh, you're not delivering too much of something. I think uh, you know d- make sure that the cadence of delivery uh, also makes sense. Uh, what we're actually seeing is you know we're looking at a version of our a membership where it's not monthly, but every other month, because uh, sometimes monthly is too much. Uh, so I think that's a very important consideration. Uh, and and the biggest lesson that the industry overall has has really seen in the last few years is, uh, you know, taking venture capital money and growing at all costs is not a recipe for success. Uh, we've seen a lot of the big players in the market that grew too quickly before substantiating their business model. And that had disastrous results. So making sure that the product itself is special and that there's a real reason that you're going to want to have this on an ongoing basis. Um, and, and, you know, really approaching the product, I think, you know, with, with heart and love and making sure it, you are communicating something that, that matters. You know, the, um, bo- you know, we're seeing that boxes are you know, very popular among millennial women. Any plans of launching a Rob Vice's targeting women? It, it's something that people constantly bring up and that we've thought about. Um, the, what we've actually found uh, is that women are, are a big portion of our current subscriber base. Uh, often they'll, they'll subscribe for their boyfriend, their husband, their brother, uh, you know, their son, but then they, they see something there that they like. And what we do have right now uh, is frankly – you know, about 30% of our members are this badass kind of woman who uh, loves a good tequila and will actually opt for a ghost pepper artisanal hot sauce and, you know, can take spicy food like anyone else. I, I don't I don't know if launching something that um, – we've had a lot of people say, why don't you launch a pink box for women? And you can't pander to women. Right. Uh, you have That's to a have a, a, a real proposition that makes sense. And there's a lot of things that I think would make sense. Um, so when the time is right, we probably will have a new offering. And by the way, we have launched uh, several expansion offerings uh, already. We have a cigar scri- subscription specifically for cigar uh, smokers called Cigar by Vices. Uh, we've just launched uh, a new uh, spirits club called Rarity Club, which I'm very excited about. The first box is going out uh, momentarily. And, uh, you know, that's really designed for uh, the, the spirits collector, things that you normally would not get access to that are very fine and rare. It's going to be available only in select markets. And so I could see something that's more female focused being one of the uh, ways that we expand our expression. Uh, but we got to make sure that we really, really hone in on what that is. There's plenty of beauty boxes on the market. Right. The world does not need another one of those. Right. Um, and, and again, we want to make sure that our current product is relevant for both men and women so that everybody can share it together. Great. So my final question, which I ask all the guests, if you were stranded on a deserted island and you could have one luxury item with you, it can't be a form of transportation to get you off that island. 
So no jet ski. No jet ski, jets. Can't be any type of mobile service or mobile device. What would that one luxury item be? I'm going to hope that there's sugar cane growing on the on the island. And I'm going to say a traditional uh, Caribbean pot still uh, for distilling my own rum. Because you can't just bring one <laughs> bottle. That'll go too quickly. So, you know, I'm going to have to spend my time distilling my own rum uh, on my desert island. Because yeah, yeah. what, what good is it to be on an island without having something to sip on? Right. And if, and if you're going to be desert, on a desert island, you want to be happy all the time. So why not distill rum? Exactly. Good good answer. Daniel, thank you so much. You've been a great guest. Appreciate um, the, the the box that uh, – tw- is this the January box that you yes. shared with me? Thank you for sharing that with me. That was uh, that was really nice. If I can't wait to dip into the uh, – is it Seed Lip? Yeah, Seed Lip. And Virginia Distilling and Virginia Company, okay. and uh, you also have some some gla- glasses from Craft House and some garnishes to, to over- complete the experience, as well as a really cool uh, uh, smoked orange uh, ginger beer to make a cocktail. Great, thank you. And one more thing, a little plug: if any of our listeners want to check out Rob Vices, where do they go? Robvices dot com. R O B B V I C E S dot com. Great, thank you, Daniel. Thank you. That's it for this episode of the Luxury Item Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this useful and entertaining, I would be really grateful if you can share it with a friend or colleague. I would love it if you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps other listeners find us. The Luxury Item Podcast is a production of Silvertone Consulting. I'm your host, Scott Kerr. Until next time.